thank you for joining us to have another episode of Pursuing Purpose, a show where you'll be able to learn about the different individuals in the Ghanaian community and hopefully future abroad and outside of our community, learning about what they've done to pursue their purpose, whether it be their passions, their interests, their skill sets, anything that draws them closer to who they're meant to be. So today we have Gay Odarte. He is the founder of Ghana Links Production Company. He is a marketing professional as well as communication professional and philanthropist, sorry. Today we'll be learning about his experience, his journey, and what he's doing to pursue his purpose. So today, Gabe, how are Thank you? you, thank you for having me. No problem, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. Very good. So we're just gonna dive a little bit um, into it. Go back in time, let us know what made you pursue this this whole empire of what you're doing? Do you remember the skill sets you had when you were a kid that made you think, okay? Um, so growing up in Ghana, I think the school that I went to, where that school takes pride in community work and uh, mm -hmm. doing a lot of things within that community. So I've, it's a boarding school with all boys. So it's like the training is very intense. And um, I think that has an effect on me till today. And um, also in my home, I live in a big family home. So mm -hmm. we treat everybody as family. To the point where even your uncles and your aunties, you give them the same respect to your parents. So uh, that's always been part of me. So when I came to Toronto, I guess for me, I felt the need to be part of a community. And my parents were not in the Ghanaian community, so I didn't know Ghanaians had like a uh, yeah. So I just wanted to create something to kind of bridge the gap between Ghanaians here and back home. And that's really what how it started. Yeah. Perfect. So I know that you didn't start with Ghana Links right away or that um, endeavor. So in university, I know that you studied something that you weren't too interested in diving deep in. Can you tell us a little bit about university? Yes, so I went to Ryerson University. I have a degree in uh, criminal justice. So um, at one point, I didn't know what I wanted to do after high school. So um, when I applied for university, I had a choice of picking um, four courses, whether psychology, sociology, politics, and criminology. Mm -hmm. So looking at all four, after two years, I realized criminology might be more interesting for me because we were discussing things like, you know, Jane and Finch and where, uh, like, hotspots where crimes are infected, like, um, where most Ghanaians live anyway, I should say. Mm -hmm. So when I hear people mention our community, like, in lectures and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I felt like, man, I'm part of that community, so how could I make a difference? even without becoming like a police officer or something like that. So, yeah, so while I was in school, I was still um, doing, like, that's how I started the Ghana Links thing because mm -hmm. as a student, I wanted something to do when I'm at home. And this was a hobby where, you know, I developed a website, Ghanaians would go there and educate themselves. This was before social media was what it was. So I felt like people were, that gap was, there was a gap between Ghanaians here and back home. So that was really my mission. When you come to my website, you just get to learn about the history of Ghana, the foods we have, places you can go to, uh, for tourism. Mm -hmm. And that was really, you know, that was it. It was just a nice. hobby that over time became a business. Yeah. That's great. So yeah. first you started off with just the website giving, giving yeah. information. Just like a tourism, yeah. Nice. And the next was actual events, right? Oh yeah, so after that I connected with event promoters in mm -hmm. Toronto and then um, they realized I have a platform that they need. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have something that I need, which is the, the people, like, you know, so we partnered up and started hosting events. And then my website became the place to go to for um, event pictures the next day and stuff like that. So it really mm -hmm. got people excited, you know. That's this was great. before Facebook uh, mm -hmm. photo album. <laughs> yeah, right. Like that. So, that was yeah. a go-to spot. Yeah, it was nice. That's yeah. great. I love that. Perfect. And just to vent, veer off a little bit, yeah. when you finished school, you realized you didn't want to be that police officer. You wanted yeah. to help support the gang community. Yeah. Yes. and other individuals. So what was your first role like that was in to marketing and um, creating those websites and communications? Well, like I was saying, it was a, uh, so when I designed my website, mm -hmm. that was just for me, but then I, I got to learn more about web designing. Mm -hmm. Because the passion was there and I had a platform, I would stay up all night learning more about it. So it was through that that other people started asking me if, if I could build one for, build one for them. Right. So it was through that and I said, okay, we can actually start a business. And I realized that our community especially needed that service because mm -hmm. there's a lot of businesses and organizations that are not online. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I said, okay, there's a problem here. I can provide a solution. And you know, so that's how the business started. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Perfect. And then um, I, I didn't mention this, but some of you may know Gabe from GCAO. So when did you make that connection with them? Um, so when I started, I actually had my own nonprofit organization called Ghana Links Foundation. We registered in um, 2009. 
but uh, the people that I started with are no longer in the community, so I had to dissolve the organization. Yeah. However, I when I met the, when I got introduced to the GCO, I felt like okay, we have similar mm -hmm. visions, things that I wanted to do in my organization. They were doing already, and they're a bigger um, organization because mm -hmm. it's for all Ghanaians right. in Ontario. So that's how I joined, and uh, I was a volunteer for a while, yeah. and then. I ran for elections and then now I'm the secretary. It's been maybe five years now okay. since I became a secretary. Yeah. That's great. So that's what it was, yeah. Honestly, you guys are doing so much and I know that there's a lot of work that you have to cover as a secretary. Yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. It's volunteer based, but you know, it's like I said, it's part of my passion with my own nonprofit organization. So for me, I see how it's aligned. Mm -hmm. And now, as a result, I don't have to do everything on my own here as far mm -hmm. as charity work is concerned. So I've taken my nonprofit to Ghana instead, mm -hmm. where it's registered there. It's no longer in Canada because I'm with the GCO. And, right. Yeah. Perfect. So, and who's running it back home? Well, I have a few friends who are like my classmates who are part of the board. Oh, okay. So if I any opportunities to come here, I can just call them and say, "Let's do that." Yeah. Perfect. And what are some of the programs that you guys do back home? Um, so I, I, I went to, six, seven years ago, I was in Ghana, and my goal was to really interview students, teachers. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the hospitals. I just wanted to see some of the problems that they're facing and how we can come back and provide uh, solutions for them, right? So there's videos on YouTube where I went to a rich hospital, spoke to some nurses and doctors. Um, I went to a few schools. And then uh, a few years later, I came back and I also donated a bunch of books to Achimata School. So part of my organization's goal is to affiliate or work with other organizations mm -hmm. and then Very help them, right? So, so if an organization here wants to donate books to Ghana and they don't know how to go about it, mm -hmm. then we come in and help right. and do that thing. And then recently I was able to gather a few um, wheelchairs, oh, wow. which I shipped to Ghana to, to, to give to people, yeah, so. Yeah. That's great, I'm glad you were able to start off seeing our community in that need and you're able to provide that need for yes, that. Yes, that's yes. amazing perfect and so you have all these things going on how are you able to balance all of these and what has it yeah. been like with covid yeah it's it's been challenging i'll say mm -hmm. but because of covid too i'm able to work at home so that gives me that flexibility to to juggle all these things mm -hmm. but if i was just in my office at nine to five it would be difficult to that's try to do all that and luckily for the gco COVID actually helped them. Like they've expanded now. We have a lot, of, uh, a lot more young people coming in. Okay. So it's not only just, I don't feel like it's only me doing most of the heavy lifting anymore. There's a lot of people coming in. So that has helped us a lot. And then with my business too, I've expanded. You know, mm -hmm. like I have a few more people in Ghana that are working with me. So it helps me. Like if I get any graphic design work, mm -hmm. I don't have to necessarily do it. I can. You know, pass it on to my team. Yeah, so That's that has right. helped a lot too. Perfect. And you, your team has about is it a handful? Four um, five, I have about there's three people mm -hmm. that I'm working with in Ghana, and then two over here. That's great. Yeah. And so, with your first couple jobs out of university, did that help mm -hmm. with um, managing everything, getting finances together? Um, well, when I came out of university, I was still looking for work, so that was mm -hmm. actually uh, challenging. I was mm -hmm. just, you know, working with any opportunity that'll come my way to just pay my bills. I'll mm -hmm. do that. But while doing all that, I still had in my mind what I want to do with myself. So mm -hmm. I still kept that going. I didn't let that discourage me. Even mm -hmm. though there was no money, I can still do what I do. Like updating my website with news doesn't cost me much money, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's times where even friends and family thought I was going to give up on this brand and kind of links because mm -hmm. they, they wasn't making money. But um, I diverted into different things. And, mm -hmm. I'm glad you kept yeah. that patience because it can It's definitely... not easy. Even till today, I mean, I'm still patient about it. I'm not where I want to be, but... Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's been good. It's been good around. That's so. great. And with that being said, um, what do you pride yourself most in about yourself? Um, I would work? say I'm very proud of my identity mm -hmm. as a Kenyan and a uh, Ghan, and so as a Krobo and my mom being a Krobo. But I, I take pride in that because I remember some years back in this country, it wasn't even popular to wear African clothing mm -hmm. to go to parties, and some of my friends know that I used to be one of the few people that would, would wear <laughs> these things and then traditional gear. Yeah, yeah. And then come to the parties and people would be looking but I just took so much pride in that and it's like just something that I like doing. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what, the reason why I started Ghana Links because I feel like our culture needs to be preserved and mm -hmm. um, maybe my siblings here don't know much about Ghana, right? right? I see the difference between me and those ones that were raised here. So I just feel like we need to preserve it and that's something that I'm very proud of. 
That's great. And so recently you have dropped um, a production on, with animation, which yes, has yes. gotten me excited. I think we need that. We need to be able to see us, our people on that screen. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about how that took place, how that started um, out? So this is something that I've thought of for, well, let's say, 10 years because it was a friend of mine, Patrick, actually came up with this idea. We had a meeting one day and it was like, we should do something like this. Mm -hmm. But this was just an idea, mm -hmm. 2011. Because the moment he told me that idea, it stuck with me till today because I thought it was very necessary and very needed. Mm -hmm. How I was going to do it, I didn't know. Um, yeah, so I, I parked that. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I use Google Docs like to create any ideas that come to my mind. Mm -hmm. I put it down. It down. So mm -hmm. I've written some of these scripts already. I had written character designs like five, six years ago, but I couldn't, I couldn't uh, embark on that project because number one, it costs a lot of money mm -hmm. to do animation, mm -hmm. and I couldn't, I didn't find a team. I believed in it, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I try to work with people in Ghana, but then, uh, like, an animator will charge you per character. He doesn't care what you're doing. Wow. He just <laughs> wants you. You pay him. I draw this. Pay me. I draw that. Right? And that's not what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So when COVID came, you know, I've been working on different different projects, and I said, you know, let me just see what I can do with this animation one more time. I went online and I finally found someone that I I thought could do what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And after discussing with that person, they saw my vision and they believed in it. And um. I like the pricing that they gave me. So through that, we actually created our own animation studio wow. where we can do different, different things, even for other people, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out to be the first black-owned animation studio in Canada because wow. we don't have anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm very happy about that, and then thanks. And then, um, so through that, I went back to my old scripts from years ago, mm -hmm. and I, I remember a friend of mine that told me that they liked script writing. So all I did was call him and I said, I have an opportunity for you, you like writing scripts, here's my story, let's do something. Mm -hmm. And he believed in it right away, yeah. we wrote the script, the animator did his parts, everything just kind of worked just, out. Yeah, the so actors, nice. the voice actors, I didn't even know who was going to be the voice actors, mm -hmm. but it just happened. That's great. And I'm good at like recognizing people's talent, so mm -hmm. I called this lady, I'm like, I know you like telling stories, blah, 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 mm -hmm. do you want to do this? She loved it right away, and her daughter happened to become the voice actor. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, so everything Perfect. just worked out perfectly. Yeah. That's great, awesome. And so I know that you're just starting things up, but yeah. do you have an idea of how many seasons you want to have? And For sure. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I want to do three different shows. So the Mansa family that we have, it's more like a, a family show, mm -hmm. but I want to do something for toddlers where kids like nursery rhymes and that kind of thing. That's Great. But African inspired, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then the other one is more like uh, preschool. Well, not preschoolers, but like kids. Mm -hmm. You know, like they go on adventures, different that's stuff great. like that. So that's okay. that's in the works. But the Mansa family is the first one. Mm -hmm. I do have about ten episodes, like titles. Nice. That I like to do, and uh, hopefully we can get some some funding and support from the Canadian government to be able to do this because we know that it's necessary in mm -hmm. in this country. It promotes diversity and okay. you know just. Something that's new, you know. Mm -hmm. so, it's new, it's yeah, different, it's different, necessary. Yeah. Even in the States, I don't think I've seen a cartoon show with the African inspired. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have yeah. some sort of stigmatism. So yeah, yeah. It's definitely good to have. I'm yeah, yeah. so happy to have that. Once I saw it, I was like, yes, I I'm wish really I had excited. this. Movie. Yeah, next episode should be out next week, hopefully. Yeah. Great, yeah. perfect. And do you see yourself doing live um, shows? Um, in the hmm. future, have you thought about not it? Not live shows, but I do see myself creating like films and mm -hmm. documentaries. You know, I'm, one of my biggest inspiration is Tyler Perry. Oh, and I like okay. the way he does. You know, he works so mm -hmm. he inspires me a lot to actually want to have my own studio and That's build. And, Perfect. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're great. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Perfect. And so, besides um, the film and production, mm -hmm. what what do you personally hope to accomplish in the next ten years? Do you see yourself? Um, back in Ghana, making this a bigger studio? Definitely, definitely. In 10 years from now, I do mm -hmm. see myself like located in Ghana mm -hmm. because most of the things that I want to do, I think it will flourish more in mm -hmm. Africa. So I like to be there and also be here mm -hmm. because like these, these cartoon shows and things that I'm creating, I don't have to be here to create it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I like to establish in Ghana and do more uh, philanthropic work with my mm -hmm. charity and uh, yeah create more jobs and opportunities for people. Mm -hmm. That's too cool. Ultimately, that's what I like to do, so yeah. That's perfect, awesome. We're gonna wrap things up. So looking back in the past, what is some support that you wish you had or some knowledge that you wish you had um, while trying to navigate this path? Hmm. Um, I think when I first started, I wish I knew a little bit more about marketing mm -hmm. and like growing a brand. Because at that time, it was more of an excitement, just doing things, many ideas will come. And I just follow it. I've diverted into different different things in the past, like manage, managing artists, 
which initially wasn't part of my your plan or your right. vision. But then as the company grew, people wanted to be part of it, and I got into managing artists because I have passion for arts and music. Mm -hmm. but then I realized that took a few years away from mm -hmm. from what I was supposed to be doing. So things like that, you know, I've tried different different things, selling T-shirts when I didn't even have the funding, but I wouldn't use credit to go and produce a T-shirt. Yeah. So like things like that. If I was to go back, I probably wouldn't do. And also, um, just um, I wasn't good at keeping relationships. Like people that I meet online, mm -hmm. who like what I'm doing or they like the brand, I wasn't good at like maintaining that relationship with mm -hmm. them. Right. So these are things that I think I'll do. Definitely better, yeah. key. I'm glad you have mentioned that. Yeah. Definitely, especially when you're ready to. It's it's hard to say no when you're just exactly. re ready to have someone exactly. join. Yeah. That's great. And then also being able to maintain those relationships. Yes, they'll forget. People will forget about you. Mm -hmm. just, uh, if you don't That's communicate right. with them and at least know within a year how many times you keep up with these people. So mm -hmm. like, yeah. And also building a team is not easy. You know, like getting people to believe in your vision. Mm -hmm. That is something that is a lot of work. And what have you done to be able to foster that? Um, I think certain people, I've come to realize people like depending on what you're working on then you'll see the interest right like mm -hmm. some people have done different different things where people didn't really care about mm -hmm. but my recent projects have become something that they were uh, like because they like what it's about mm -hmm. someone actually texted me and said um this is your biggest this is the biggest project you've done so far blah blah blah. but it's been 12 years right? mm -hmm. and you've been doing a lot so yeah, that is so, frustrating <laughs> so i think mm -hmm. uh yeah people just mm -hmm. choose what they want to gravitate to and also being consistent um, helps a lot because mm -hmm. if you're not consistent and they feel like why would I waste my time joining this mm -hmm. brand or this person if they're not demonstrating that you know mm -hmm. they're consistent with their work and they're passionate yeah. about it so yeah I think that's what's kept me going that's great yeah. I love that you said a lot of great tips a lot of things that people should consider um, is there a special message you have out there for people out there pursuing yeah. entrepreneurship philanthropy yes. um, marketing communications I will say uh, just follow your passion and follow your dreams because a lot of things are going to come your way that will discourage you from continuing. But if you have a long-term goal and you know that um, this is what you really want to do, nothing will stop you from doing it. So I'll say just be determined. Even your closest friends and family might discourage you, right? But you should see yourself. You should see a vision that nobody else sees because mm -hmm. that helps you as you go along. And then you know when someone comes in your life, you know that this person, I can work with this person, do that because you see the vision. Right? But if you don't have long term vision, then people will come and distract you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for so sure. that's my advice. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you learned everything you can from Gabe. And I hope you can tune in and see what he has in store. Can you let us know where we can find you? Uh, yes, yeah, so our YouTube channel is Ghana Links TV. Um, our website is GhanaLinks.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as Ghana Links. Perfect. Thank you. So follow him. There's so much more he has in store. I'm excited for you guys to see it. Thank you again for joining us on Pursuing Purpose, where you can learn about others, individuals, experiences, activities, interests, passions that brought them to be the people that they are today. Thank you. Take care. Bye.